Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today's vlog is gonna be a little bit special, a little bit different. Today, I wanted to vlog, bring you along our journey of, of today, but I wanted to also show you a little bit more of an in-depth look at what I eat in a day. I have been saying this for the last couple months, but 2021 is, is me and Dan's year of health, and we have been trying to take that quite seriously with our food, and I think that we have uh, come up with some pretty great recipes that we've been eating throughout the days and the weeks. Oh, that's so rude, Fridge. Thank you for your ice. We appreciate it. So we thought we'd dip our toes into the what I eat in a day world and do that today, but also just do our regular vlog, but speak thoroughly through the meals. So yeah. So this morning, I'm actually not doing a workout this morning. I'm on like the last legs of my hair. I can't possibly go through another sweat without washing it. So I'm just gonna take this day with the last day before I need to wash my hair. So I'm not doing a workout this morning. So when I'm not doing a workout, my mornings look a little bit different and I'll show you what I'm eating to start my day. Okay, first thing, no matter what, I start out with my coffee, and lately I've really been on the brewed coffee train. I just really missed me a good big cup of brewed coffee, and so I have been brewing. I'm loving the Starbucks Blonde Roast, and then I take some unsweetened vanilla almond milk, and I heat that up in my little frother, pour that into the coffee, and then currently I'm still on my winter coffee train, which depending on what I'm feeling, I will use some kind of sweetener, either maple syrup, honey, or I've been loving this um, Joseph's sugar-free syrup, which is really nice. I don't know how they did it, but it's fabulous. And then I add some cinnamon and probably as the weather gets warmer, I'll switch back to my cold brew life, but this has been the coffee I've been loving. And then because I'm not doing a workout, I wanna have a good, nice, filling, substantial, healthy breakfast. And if I'm not doing a workout, I will have my oatmeal. My oatmeal varies depending on what I have in the fridge, but today I'm gonna be taking some oats. It takes me about a minute. Like these quick oats boil so quickly, add some water in the pot, boil them up. And then kind of like when it's almost done, I'll add some almond milk into there. And then once I turn off the heat, I will add in a scoop of my, my protein chocolate smooth protein powder. It's really delicious. It makes it just taste like a bowl of chocolate oats, which it is at this point. <laughs> and then again, depending on what I have, I will add in my toppings. I always add some cinnamon. I might add like a little squeeze of salt. It just makes it taste really yummy. Right now I have chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, and I'm gonna top it with some blueberries. And then again, I'll go in with some kind of sweetener and I'm gonna use my Joseph's sugar-free syrup. And that's my oatmeal. It's super delicious, it's super filling, and it kind of just tastes like you're having dessert for breakfast. Love my oats. So this is my breakfast. The oatmeal is so good, oh my God. <laughs> and I realized as I was pouring it into the bowl that some of you might be like, why is it so soupy? Uh, I like it a little bit soupy. I like my oatmeal milky, but it also like firms up as I'm mixing everything together. So you can add as much milk as you wish, but this is my sweet little bowl of breakfast soup and it's so good. And I'm gonna sit here and enjoy this brekkie, check some emails, and that is breakfast, my friends. All right, guys, breakfast has been had. I gave my hair just a little refresh, a little zhuzh, and now I need to get dressed for the day. Need to film a video in this room while the sun is out and hot and bright. Bright, bright is what I was looking for. It is definitely not hot yet, but hopefully soon. <laughs> and today's outfit and this portion of the video is actually very kindly sponsored by Everlane. Everlane is an amazing brand that makes sustainable pieces of clothing that are made to last. The quality is absolutely beautiful and they were very, very sweet and allowed me to pick a few pieces from their new in, working from home, cozy essentials pieces. And I wanted to get a few things that would fit in perfectly with my spring wardrobe and going onward into many a season. So I wanted to show you guys a few of the pieces that I picked and then we'll get dressed, show you the OOTD. Like, you know the tuck love is real when you literally tuck your pajama shirt into your pajama pants. Anyway, <laughs> the first piece from Everlane is this silky cotton shirt. I am obsessed with this. You guys know how much I love my button shirts, but this one's actually a gray and white stripe and the stripe is really thin and nice. And normally when I buy my button down, button up shirts, I usually go for a super oversized fit, but I actually wanted to get a more fitted feel in this shirt and it ended up fitting so nicely. It's a really nice, thin, lightweight material. So going into spring, going into summer, it's gonna be the perfect piece to just wear open. I love unbuttoning 
getting my shirt, wearing it with shorts, flowy pants, whatever. Any of these button down shirts are so versatile. You can literally wear it with anything. Layer any of your vests over top, any crew neck sweaters. You can even wear it open as a beach cover up if you want to love this. And I thought that the gray and white stripe was very unique. I do have a black and white stripe one, which can look a little bit jailbird sometimes, but the gray and white was a much like softer approach to it, which I love. Let me show you real quick. So this is the shirt on. I just did a little like one roll up of the sleeve, which I think gives it a little bit a little bit of interest. I did up two of the buttons. I like to leave like quite a, a gape here for my necklaces to sit. And then normally with a shirt like this, I would do like a little half tuck moment there. You could do a full tuck in your pants, but I think this just looks really good and just sits so nicely. Obviously not in sweatpants. I'll put real pants on after, I promise. <laughs> I just wanted to show you this. I like the more fitted feel of the shirt. And yeah, it's just super light. Very breathable, love this shirt, very excited about this one. The next piece I got is actually the alpaca knit tee. And my love for this shirt is just ridiculous. I think it is so cool. And I don't know why I'd never considered a knit t-shirt before. It's just like taking a white t-shirt, anything you'd wear a white t-shirt with, blazer, jeans, pants, and elevating it and giving it a more like classy luxe feel. That's just the vibe I get with these little knit t-shirts. How cute are these? I got the Heather Laurel, which is this beautiful like pastel light green. And then I also got it in the bone shade and they are just like, hello, right in line with like my spring wardrobe lineup. Like just these little fine details in the knit itself is just so beautiful. Ah! So this is the knit tee on. I think it is just such a great fit. I love this color and does just make the t-shirt the feel a little bit more special, a little bit more elevated. And this color is just, I'm, I love it so much. And it's not itchy. It's not uncomfortable and itchy. It doesn't itch my chest. Yeah, I love this one so much. I think this is such a great pop of color for spring, but it's such a beautiful fabric, great quality. And I will definitely have these in the wardrobe for years to come. This is so gorgeous. The next set I got from Everlane, I, listen, you guys are gonna be like, are you serious? Another pair of sweatpants. But as you may or may not have seen in my videos popping up over the last year, the sweatpants collection has grown at a, a substantial rate and the collection collection is extensive for sure, as I think many of our working from home situations has been. But Everlane actually had these really beautiful like Terry jogger oversized crew neck sweater sets. And I don't actually have a black sweatsuit, which shocked me because I love black so much. And black is such a staple and especially in a sweat set, like, yes, please give me the black. And so I actually picked their, oh, the Terry collection. This is the black crew neck. I actually, I wore this yesterday. I'm not gonna lie, all day. It is so cozy. And what I love about it, I've been honest with you guys about this in the past, okay? I'm a very sweaty gal. <laughs> and so many sweatsuits, sweaters and sweatpants are like really, really thickly, heavily lined with fleece. And I love that this is just a nice thin light terry material so especially going into spring and summer if you want to have a sweatsuit to lounge around and bop around in it's such a great material i love this like line stripe detail on the back it fits so nicely and the black is like a true black it's not a wash black it's not faded it's like true true black and then the joggers are here they've got a great little cream string detail and then the key it's finished with the cinched elastic this is key for cozy joggers i don't want no loose pants flapping about. So this, oh, this set is so great, so comfortable. And again, it's it's nice and light. So if you run warm, that suit is perfect for you. I previously mentioned to you guys that I had my eyes on a pair of black loafers that have still yet to come in stock. Those will come eventually. But let me tell you, when I saw that Everlane had these beautiful camel colored leather loafers, I squealed. I thought that the camel color would be such a perfect pair of shoes to wear going into spring and summer and all year round if you felt and depending on where you live in the world. But look at these, look at these beautiful leather loafers. I love the finish on them. I love how clean and simple they are. The stitching is so great. And this color, this beautiful camel tan color just screams spring and summer wardrobe to me, like any kind of like cream blazers, white pants, light jeans, flowy tops, and then pairing it with these, yes, 
please. These are so gorgeous and I think are going to be such a shoe staple in the upcoming seasons. And uh, yeah, just beautiful quality. Just the, the stitching is so great on these. These pieces are just going to blend so seamlessly in with the spring wardrobe and I'm really excited. If you guys wanted to shop any of the pieces that I mentioned, I'm definitely going to link all of them in the description box down below for you guys. And if you wanted to check out Everlane, beautiful, beautiful brand. And thank you so much to them for these fabulous spring wardrobe additions. I, this t-shirt, oh my, I cry. Okay, coming at you from the phone here, I just threw this little outfit together, which when I put it on, I'm, I'm like clearly really trying to make this belt happen right now, but the, the brown in here is actually a lot warmer than the brown in the loafers, but just to give you the general idea of what this outfit could look like, I think this is so cute. I love the gray stripe. I think it's such a nice, like light, softer take on a striped shirt and just bopping around the house in this. Sans belt works great too, but just so nice and comfy, cozy. And then when the world opens up, we're, we're ready to rock. And even with the alpaca tees, like same thing, just easy thrum pieces you don't have to think about. But still look very elevated and classic as well. So there's the outfit. This is what I'm gonna wear today, guys. I'm gonna keep the lovers on too. These are so comfy. So that's the outfit of the day, guys. I am going to now set up to film a makeup video. As you can tell, I am still in my bare face. So while the sun's out, I'm gonna film a makeup video up here and then we will have lunch and show you what we're making. So let's get to, get to filming. Okay guys, finished filming. I don't know how I feel about the, the makeup look in the end, but I changed the shirt because I thought this would go better for taking photos of this look with the, anyway, whatever. I'm starving. By the time I'm done filming, usually I'm very, very ready for lunch. And I promised you guys in a previous video that I'd show you my warm beet salad recipe. And this is the salad that, again, it depends on what I have in the fridge, but these ingredients have been pretty consistent in it. And I hate salad, I hate lettuce, I hate cold things, I like warm food, cooked food. So this is my like warm cooked take on a salad. It's salad for those of you who don't like to eat salad and it's a way for us to get some vegetables into our body. So <laughs> basically what I do, I make my Cajun shrimp, which is just shrimp and garlic and Cajun seasoning in a pan. Just whip that up real quick, have the shrimp ready. They cook in like three seconds, it's so fast. And then I do a little like pan fry, but I add water. I kind of like steam chopped up asparagus and a zucchini. Let that sit and boil and bubble in a pan. And then I actually take spinach and I chop it up really, really finely just cause I don't like I don't like spinach, I don't like big leaves, so I feel like if it's in smaller bites, I'm more likely to eat it. Please tell me I'm not alone here, but. So I put the spinach in the bowl, then I put the asparagus and zucchini. I chop up beets. I love beets, just plain. I don't need anything on them. I put those in the bowl, and then I top it with the Cajun shrimp, and I love to put some alfalfa sprouts on top. And then the dressing that I'm obsessed with is the Primal Kitchen cilantro lime dressing. And I put a little bit of that onto each bowl, and that's it. All right, guys, so this is lunch. The warm salad looks divine. You can add, you know what's really good is feta actually, but trying to have a little less cheese in my daily life, okay? But this is delicious, it smells delicious. We're gonna absolutely muck this up, enjoy our lunch, and then we need to have a couple computer hours and we'll check back in with you guys after. Bon appetit. Hi friends. It's 6.33 p.m. It's been many hours since we last saw you at lunch. Uh, just had a busy day. We filmed a, a video. We've taken a lot of content. I put my hair in a pony just to switch up the look a little bit. I'm now donning the Everlane cozy Terry sweatsuit. Look at this thing. Look at, look at how cozy this magic is. Um, yeah, and we've just been having some computer computer time, exporting all the footage, all that good stuff. Um, we did have one snack, these Quest protein chips, the ranch chips, these are supreme. It's like a healthy chip if you love snacking on chips and things, this is a great option. Helps you get in some more protein to your, helps you get more protein into your day. Love those, the ranch flavor and the nacho flavor, mm, those are tasty. We've reached a ravenous hungry point in our day and 
definitely like to keep some very quick meals in my arsenal for when I get this way. Helps us not order Uber Eats as frequently. So I'm actually just gonna whip up a really quick pasta with chicken. I'll show you guys how I set it up, but it's just buying the healthy yummy pasta sauce. That's the key. Let's, 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 let's. Okay, my teeth are free to taste test. Let's make Pasta. All right guys, so the yummy pasta, very, very easy to make. I've got some water boiling behind me just so I could speed up the process a little bit. I've been loving using like a protein pasta. I, I struggle to eat enough protein in my day to fill up my proper macros. So trying to get some protein in any extra way that I can. So yeah, the chickpea, got these on Amazon. They're great. Gonna pop those in, they cook really fast. When that's all boiled and ready to go, I'll strain the noodles a little bit, leave a little bit of pasta water in there pop in the Primal Kitchen vodka sauce. This is a non-dairy vodka sauce. It is so delicious. I do add cheese because I'm, I'm a bad, you know, dairy allergy gal. <laughs> but it just like takes the heavy cream out of it, out of your diet, out of your meal, but it's still so delicious. So I pour this sauce all in there. Then I've got chicken thighs that I'm going to fry in a pan. Put whatever seasonings you feel. I'm gonna use some Greek seasonings and have those ready to go, sprinkle it on top. One thing I did save from lunch was a few extra veggies. So I have a few of the zucchini and asparagus niblets that we made up at lunch and I'm gonna to toss that in at the end. Maybe sauce in some mozzarella and Parmesan at the end. And my friends, that is your easy, delicious pasta. Mm. All right guys, so this is dinner. Listen. Sometimes we can make this a little bit healthier. You can add less sauce if you want. I'm a sauce lover, and there will be extra sauce in this household. Memo, extra sauce for you. And sometimes if I just want the pasta, I'll just fry up some asparagus and have it on the side and the pasta and the chicken, you know? Like I don't always add the veggies, we just had leftover from lunch, so that kind of worked out perfectly. So you can mix and match it however you wish, but we're gonna eat dinner now and then we need to post today's video. So the day continues, my friends, and we have a very exciting snack to show you later. <laughs> but for now, bon apple teeth again. Good evening, friends. Oh, the camera's shaking, I'm so sorry. We had dinner. I'm still feeling delightfully full. We took a trip to the dump and we've just uh, posted tonight's video. So now it is time to take this day off. I wanted to wash my face and things before showing you our late night little sneaky snack. But first I'm gonna put a bib on. I don't wanna ruin my new sweater. And I always, it's like toothpaste, face masks, everything. I always dribble it all over myself. So let's just not do that. I'm gonna wash my makeup off. Totally makeup removing cleansing for you. Yeah, I wanted to kind of have a little chat with you guys in the bathroom before wrapping up this vlog because I realized that now like a week has passed and I still haven't talked about Invisalign even though my lisp has been so present in these <laughs> few videos and I've gotten a lot of messages and questions about Invisalign and I didn't really know what to say. It's like, it's, it's braces. Like if you wanna fix something with your teeth, you're gonna get them. But I figured I would give you guys a little background as to why I have now decided to get Invisalign. And then hopefully like throughout my treatment, I can compile a little video showing you how it goes. And then in like six months, I can show you the after. I also can't believe it's gonna be in my mouth for so long. Oh my God. <laughs> so I'm gonna briefly take you guys back in history to a little, little baby land. I'm gonna insert the photo that I have just discovered on my phone here for you. This is eight year old me, okay? This is on a family vacation in Florida. <laughs> I had very, very big gap teeth and I always had a really big overbite. It was like this. <laughs> when I was 10 or 11, I don't exactly remember like the time I got it, but when we lived in the Maldives, I remember my mom being like, woo, cheap dental. <laughs> and to fix said teeth, I got this retainer, but we didn't stay in the Maldives and I never went to checkups after this retainer and never like continued the treatment. I don't even remember. I'd have to like fact check with my mom how long I actually wore it, but I'm certain I never wore this retainer more than a few months but at the time it had just like pushed all my teeth together. So throughout high school, I remember, oh my God, oh my God, okay. Following that in grade 10 specifically, 
was when we were all very into Hannah Montana, okay? Miley Cyrus had that little, like, we called it the scraggle tooth, and like all my friends and family would be like, why you have Miley's scraggle tooth? And I was like, <laughs> all my teeth had just been put together and one of my like big, you know, what do you call this? Your main tooth overlapped the other one. My teeth had gone from like being totally gapped and spaced out and huge overbite to then with this retainer being all pushed together and my teeth kind of just kept being pushed together. Like it even happened on my bottom teeth. It was super odd. I'm sure it was a mixture of the retainer and then just however my teeth grew as I was growing older. And then in grade 11, so when I was like, how old are you in grade 16? When I was 16. Um, I didn't want to get braces. I couldn't afford them. And then I also just didn't want to wear braces. I remember being like, no, grad photos. I don't want to get braces. I don't think like Invisalign or this, you know, clear braces was a frequent option at the time. I think it was like, you're going to get the silver hardware braces. So I actually went and saw my dentist and he actually just shaved the tooth down to try and make it look a little bit straight. And that was it. I just it kind of helped fix like the look of my tooth <laughs> but didn't actually fix any of the rest of the teeth anyway hold on i'm gonna wash my face really quickly this is officially gonna be my last squeeze of the tatcha rice wash i was already like doing the bend over and bleh. she has been so loved i have loved this cleanser so much okay i'm gonna do the kipris deep forest clay i'm gonna put a little bit of this on i've got this crazy rashy breakout here. I don't know what it came up from. It was super random. Anyway, okay. So that was the last thing I had done to my tooth. And anytime, like, here's the thing. Sometimes I don't know if it's just people like trying to get money or if they're actually telling you you need help. Sometimes I have little faith in certain experiences with dentists and dermatologists and whatnot. I'm like, what are you, what are you trying to tell me? Okay. <laughs> Basically anytime I went to get a cleaning or a checkup at a dentist over my entire life, they'd always be like, oh my God, you need braces. Oh my God, do you need braces? Have you ever considered getting braces? And every time I'd be like, no, 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 I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to deal with the look of it. Oh, I have grad photos. Oh, I have university photos. Oh, I'm on YouTube. I don't want to have braces, blah, blah, whatever. So throughout my entire like teenage and going into adult life, I have quite a significant overbite and I have the really bad clicking in my jaw. My jaw is just constantly like, I don't know if I can, let me see if I can show you guys the sound. Like every time I bite, you can hear a click. It's very odd. I remember as a kid, my dad would be like, oh my God, I can't sit next to you at dinner because I can't listen to the click. And you know, I've spent the last almost eight years of my life staring at my face, staring at my teeth, getting photos taken of my teeth. I've got a very strong left side is my good side. And that is because of the way my teeth are situated because of their weird little overlap, like the, my whatever. My teeth are fine. I can work with it. I've learned what my angles are. For a multitude of different reasons, I always knew that I should at one point have braces of some kind or have at least my jaw issue be fixed. During all of this time, Dan got Invisalign. <laughs> and so I've spent the last, I think he only had them in for four or five months, but he went through Invisalign and it looked like such a lovely, easy process. He just finished and he got his final retainer and he's done. He just has to pop the retainer in forever, forever, I don't know. And it's just one of those things where you don't necessarily think about it if no one in your like inner circle has done it. So no one I've known has had Invisalign and so I just never considered it as an option and so when Dan did Invisalign I was like damn it I've just always wanted to do a little bit of fixing. I've always had a little bit of an overbite. My teeth are pushed together I'm such an avid flosser because I have to be yeah There's definitely work to be done and obviously it is more noticeable to me because I stare at my face all day for a living <laughs> and I nitpick these things but it was also the basically what they're doing. They're they're realigning my bite. So I have a I have a bad bite and I'm kind of chewing away one side of my teeth and this Invisalign that I'm having it's it's going to be about 6 months that I have these trays in and you get new trays every 2 weeks and that's going to realign my bite. So hopefully I'll have a normal bite by the end of this and hopefully fingers crossed it'll fix whatever issues I'm having with my jaw. That's pretty much it. That's a little backstory on my teeth and why I'm getting my 
teeth kind of resituated. So it's gonna help my mouth physically and it's also going to help the aesthetic visual aspect of it too. So, so far it's been five days. I've had them in for five days and they're already driving me crazy. I am way too much of a snacker to be tolerating you know, these trays in my mouth. Like you have to take them out and I brush them and I brush my teeth every time I eat something. So it's like really, I'm really having to like schedule my meals here if I want this to be effective in the way that they're meant to be. So I'm sure, I'm sure I have not covered everything, but there's been a lot of messages from you guys asking about Invisalign. So if you have any questions, like it's definitely something I can touch on and continue talking about as I go throughout the process, but otherwise it's, it's braces. <laughs> Hopefully I'll have some straighter, nicer looking teeth by the end of it and that's about it. And you know what, other than the lisp, a lot of you who actually have Invisalign or have had Invisalign, thank you so much, first of all, for all of your messages. I was so shocked at how many of you have done it. And a lot of you said that the lisp does go away and I am ready for that. This has been so ridiculous listening to myself. It's such an odd, <laughs> sound coming out of my mouth, but yeah, thank you all for your messages and your reassurances. I'm hoping I'll get more used to it. I know that Dan, his just was a very smooth process and that was definitely inspiring to have my partner having gone through it and he kind of showed me the ropes, if you will. So yeah, I have Invisalign people and for the most part, I think I'm just gonna continue popping them out whenever I film a video, but obviously in the vlogs and whatnot, you'll be seeing it because I have to wear them apparently 22 out of 24 hours a day. So the Invisalign is in my mouth. Ugh. I'm gonna continue on with my skincare. I just opened this. I'm gonna try this Biosance Squalane Marine Algae Eye Cream. My eyes have been really dry. I've been getting like really flaky, right? Like in my inner corner eye area, it's so odd. I'm gonna try using that eye cream. See how I get along with it this week. Just put that on. I'm gonna use my usual SkinCeuticals lineup. The Resveratrol BE. I love this so much. And the skincare is done, you guys. Let's go downstairs and I'll show you guys the dessert recipe I've been making so much. Yes, I'm gonna have to brush my teeth again after this. This is very sad, but it's gonna be worth it. And I'm excited for you guys to see this yumminess. All right, guys, we are back in the kitchen. I wanna show you our healthy Wendy's Frosty recipe. This is totally derived from a multitude of different TikToks we've watched, but have slowly been perfecting it to our own recipe. And this is something that Dan and I eat as a late night treat, and also why I was very desperate to find bananas in some previous vlogs. <laughs> so in a blender, you're gonna take some frozen bananas. I just freeze any of my like very ripe bananas that I get, for example. This one's getting pretty gross. I'm definitely going to chop that up and put it in a bag in the freezer for a future healthy frosty. <laughs> then I have the my protein. I mean, we already had this today, but you can never go wrong with more chocolate smooth baby But the chocolate flavor is the key. I guess whatever flavor you want. I love a, a chocolate Wendy's classic frosty So this gives it that kind of flavor maple syrup You can use sugar-free syrup for this if you want, but I don't really mind I'm just gonna use maple syrup. I do a little squeeze of salt some vanilla extract, a little bit of cinnamon, and then normally, I don't know why, oh my God, I realized this this morning, but normally I use vanilla unsweetened almond milk, but I just have regular, regular unsweetened almond milk, but that's fine, I'll just put a little bit more vanilla in. Anyway, you put that all in a blender and you blend it up. I can't give measurements to you because I don't personally use measurements. I completely eyeball it, but I do like one banana for each of us, so one banana for me, one banana for Dan. I'll do one scoop of protein per banana, and then the rest is just eyeball it. Sometimes you're blending it and you're like, oh God, I need more liquid, add more almond milk, just make it to your desired consistency. And this is our healthier Wendy's Frosty, AKA our go-to dessert that we have been devouring lately. <laughs> All right guys, me and the, and the coned kitty, what did I call her today? The coned waddler. We are going to head to bed. It's been a long day. It's been a very productive day. And I hope you enjoyed coming around with us, seeing some of the healthier meals that we have been doing and creating and eating in our daily life. That's it for today's vlog, guys. I'm gonna take oh, this, this meowing kitty cat to bed. And we'll see you all tomorrow for a new video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you very soon. Bye.